Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the Phillips curve, what it is, why do we care, and then uh, do a short uh, example of what's going on, a type question. Okay, so uh, before we do this, this is often called the business cycle, other people call it the holy tr trinity of macro, um, but an economy is looking for economic growth. Okay, so that what that means is they want the GDP, the real GDP to grow up, grow. They want uh, more goods and services to be purchased and more factors to be purchased, right? So that's the land, labor, and capital. So when that's happening, we get economic growth, the economy's growing, most economies are growing most of the time, which is good. When that happens, unemployment is going to fall, okay? Because as firms want to sell more things, they're going to need to hire more workers. More workers means less unemployment. Uh, and then as those workers get jobs, they're going to get a paycheck or going to get higher wages and they're going to get, uh, they're going to buy more stuff. So this is going to lead to higher prices, which is inflation. Okay. Inflation is the general rise in the, in the uh, price level of an economy. So this is uh, the good part of the business cycle. Okay. The other side say an economy enters a recession. Okay. There's going to be negative economic growth. Uh, unemployment's going to rise as firms don't have need for as many workers and there's going to be deflation so there'll be a negative inflation uh, on that side okay so this is the recessionary cycle part of the cycle and this is the growth part of the cycle okay now the reason this is a holy trinity is uh, that what can happen is if policymakers step in and say say they said unemployment is a big problem okay we need to uh, put people back to work or something like that, right? Or cut their taxes or something, uh, get them to spend more money, okay? So if they try to, let me make that a different color. If they try to uh, decrease this high unemployment, okay? I'm just hiring people or whatever, um, they're going to get more inflation, okay? Because these two are often inverse here, okay? Um, and we may get some economic growth, but you're going to still have this problem here. So it's kind of like one of those whack-a-mole machines at the uh, in an arcade, or if you try to solve one problem, say it's unemployment, you're going to end up with a different problem, uh, inflation. Okay. Similarly, if you had a period of time where there's high inflation and central bank cut the money supply or increased interest rates or they raised taxes or something like that, um, to try to combat this high inflation, you're going to end up with more unemployment and you might end up with less economic growth. So that's sort of the, the issue here. These are the three things and you can't always have uh, you know, positive stuff happening in all three. Okay, So let's look at the Phillips curve here. Uh, here in the United States, this is 1960 to 1969. Try to do this fairly quickly. So in 1960, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Unemployment 5.5%, inflation 1.7%. So we've got inflation on the y-axis, unemployment on the uh, x-axis, so 550 and 1.7, right about there. Okay, that's 1960. Okay, uh, then 1961, we get 6.69 on the unemployment, and we're going to go down right about there. Move on a little bit. And 5.5 and 1.2, 5.5 and 1.2, so we got one up there. And 1963, 5.6 and 1.2, 5.6 and 1.2. So we end up really, really similar there during the JFK year. 1964, 5 and 1.3, right about there. So we're really clumped in right about here. What is the problem here? Uh, unemployment's a little high. Inflation's fine, unemployment's a little high. So if I'm a policymaker, I might say, well, I'm gonna try to target uh, unemployment, okay? So when they do that, let's see what happens. So uh, 4.5, this is the thing, the Great Society, right? 4.5 and then 1.6, okay? So 4.5, 1.6, that's right there. Uh, 3.79, so you can see unemployment's falling, but then it, we're, we're getting some uh, inflation here, 2.9. So 3.79, 2.9, right about there, 3.8 and 3.1, so 3.8 and 3.1, okay, and then 3.5, very low unemployment, and 4.2, and then 3.5, and I have covered that up with the American flag. Let's see if I've got that in in here, out of the way, 
and go 5.5. .5, so 3.4 and 5.5. .5. Right about there. Okay, and so we'll just take our um, green pen here and kind of connect the dots. Probably use the bigger, bigger one. Then we got a nice, nice curve there. And so this is showing the inverse relationship between uh, unemployment and inflation. And so what happened here? High unemployment. Let me use a bigger brush here. Uh, right there. So we got high unemployment. Okay, let's do something about it. Let's put people in the inner city to work. Great society. Well, as they did, unemployment fell and inflation started to rise. Okay, uh, you could also think about it the opposite way here. When inflation was low, uh, unemployment was higher. Less people working, less money going through there. So uh, there's that. Let's see how I did there. No, not bad. Okay, so there's the one out of the textbook. Um, did a pretty good job there. Okay, so that's uh, that's the relationship. Okay, we may pre be presented with a question like this. Okay, so assume that the current unemployment rate in country A is lower than the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, so this is a tricky part. The unemployment rate is lower than the natural rate. So like if the, let's think about the United States terms. Nat natural rate is about, it's somewhere between 4 to 5 percent. They argue about where it is, but let's, let's say it was 4, 4 and a half percent was our natural rate of our country. Um, and the current unemployment rate is lower than that. So let's say it's really only 3%. Okay, so what would that actually mean? That would mean this economy, and it's just telling me this is this is overheating. This is not sustainable. Uh, and eventually this is going to be some kind of issue here. So 4.5% the natural rate and then something lower than that. Draw a single correctly labeled graph with both the long-term Phillips curve and the short-run Phillips curve. Um, let's go back to black. Uh, and we'll label the current point Z. Okay, so we've got quickly drawn graph here. I'm going to use I for inflation and UN for unemployment rate. Both of these are as percents. Okay, this would be zero. Okay, so uh, 3% uh, unemployment. Okay, so we'll put that there at 3. And if it has 3%, if we're lower than where we should really be in a natural terms, we're going to have some inflation, okay? Because there's more people working than really the economy can handle, okay? Uh, wages are a bit higher or whatever. And so if 4 point, whoops, 4.5% 4 is the uh, long run Phillips curve, it should be a straight line, so I'll do that a little better. It's going to be right here. That's just a straight line. This is what the economy can handle, and I'll label that the long run Phillips curve. Okay. Uh, identify a specific so so this is where we're at. Okay. Identify a specific fiscal policy action to bring the economy to full employment. So we really want to uh, stop this overheating. So you could do something like uh, raising taxes. You could cut government spending. You could do both. You could uh, set up some regulations. Some kind of labor regulations, uh, make sure the right people weren't in the wrong jobs or vice versa, something like that. Uh, raising taxes is the easiest one. Pay down some of that debt. Okay. Uh, draw a correctly labeled graph of the loanable funds market. Okay, that's a different graph. I'm not going to deal with that one right now. Um, and assume no fiscal. Will the fiscal policy shift to the right or shift to the left? Um, well, this part of the question doesn't really deal with what I'm trying to talk about, but um, but that's that's where we're at. Okay, so the, this is the overheated economy, um, and what we want to see, you know, the short run Phillips curve is going to look something like this. It could have some kind of bend to it, like the other one did. Um, doesn't necessarily need to if we only have a couple periods of time. Let's before I leave you, let's think about this last point. Our last point here. And that's right here. We'll, we'll call this point, I guess we're calling it Z. Uh, we'll call this point uh, W. Okay. So point W, what does point W mean? Well, this one means I've got higher unemployment. Okay. And I've got lower inflation. I'll give you a second to think about what that probably means. Point W is in a recession. Okay. We're, we've gone higher than full employment. We've got deflation and we're in a recession. And so if the government comes in and says, Okay, we're going to cut taxes, we're going to spend a bunch of money, we're going to deregulate, we're going to end up moving the economy back over here, 
and in the hopes that the long run we get to here. Okay, policymakers don't always think about that, but that's how they should think about it. Okay, so that's the short run Phillips curve, the long run Phillips curve, how they interact. Thank you.